Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. Today we explore the visual and affordable side of home theater with the very new Cybest Glorus G1 projector. The G1 is retailing at $300 at the time of this recording. It may fluctuate, so don't yell at me. This projector was provided to me for this review. No money changed hands. If you're in the market for a starter projector, it's fairly plain that the G1 is priced higher than the competition. It's an abundant species in the Amazonian jungle. When I was considering whether to review this projector, I sensed there were enough differentiators that the additional price is justified and worthy of your consideration. But enough pillow talk, let's get to the main specs. Per usual, these entry projectors really want to find a way to sneak that 4K logo in their promo material, typically by saying 4K compatible or something like that. This virtually always means it can accept a 4K signal, and instead of exploding in your living room, 4K content is downscaled to 1080. The G1 is no different in this regard. It's a 1080 Full HD projector. That won't explode. Brightness, 500 ANSI lumens. This is an important metric when gauging how vivid the image will be. I would say 500 ANSI lumens is generally price appropriate and roughly 25% more ANSI's than the slightly less expensive competitors. But, but, soundbar Dan, this projector over here says it has 10,000 lumens. It must be as bright as the sun. It might burn a hole through my wall. Yes, but the ANSI lumens, which are calculated differently, are advertised as 300. So just 60% of the practical brightness of the G1. Autofocus, nifty feature. The G1 adjusts the focus automatically as you move the projector and the picture changes. You can manually tweak the results if you are unsatisfied with the effort. Autofocus is unique at this tier and is not standard even on projectors that cost thousands more. The G1 boasts 100,000 hours of bulb life. This seems to be far more life than one would need out of an entry projector. There is, however, a reason to give this claim some weight, as the G1 has a fully sealed optical engine that keeps bug legs and micro boogers from seeping in and degrading the image and optical machinery over time. A big one, I think. Android TV is built in. I mean that literally. In the projector body, there is this compartment dedicated for storing, powering, and transferring signals from this completely nondescript little Android TV box. It runs Android TV 10, and seems to be a clean build free from third-party bloatware. So yes, Android TV gets you Wi-Fi connectivity. So think access to practically limitless premium content. And Bluetooth connectivity. So think Bluetooth speakers and game controllers. The physical integration of this kind of box is a savvy play as you are no longer forced to fumble around with a chunky streaming box, extra power cord, extra HDMI cable, extra remote. That's all worth something. This projector is not huge, but it's definitely not one of these mini micro keep in your purse kind of objects. The housing is white and silver along the equator. Materials wise, I'd say it's standard. Plastic housing feels appropriate for the price. No shortage of vents. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw it comes with this padded storage case, which stores the projector and other accessories you may want to keep with your projector. In the front, you have the lens with the provided protective cover and an adjacent sensor for managing autofocus. On the top of the projector, you have a D-pad with a confirmation button that controls the projector interface. In addition, you have a dedicated power source and back button. The bottom, you'll find four rubber feet for stability, under which are your four mounting holes. Also, you'll find a tilt adjuster screw, if looking to get the image a pinch higher. In the back, you have an x-axis tilt adjustment, so often referred to as a keystone corrector, if your picture is rendering in a manner inconsistent with a rectangle. The ports, USB for updates, music, pictures, and text files. The file format compatibility is somewhat narrow, I would suggest consuming that kind of content via the Android TV. 
There is an HDMI input if you want to connect an alternative streamer or gaming console or laptop. If you're picky about your source component, this is handy for sure. You won't find arc or optical, so hold off on the fancy soundbar. All right, analog AV for DVD players circa 2004. It's a great port to show your kids just how brutal your childhood entertainment conditions were. And last, a handy headphones port for headphones or for a wired self-amplified speaker. The remote, it can navigate both the native and Android environment with this D-pad. There is a dedicated autofocus button if the picture is not looking quite right and quick links to Netflix and Prime Video. The native projector interface is completely unremarkable, but clean. You'll find quick links to media from a USB stick, as well as your sources like AV, HDMI, and Android TV. Settings is right there in the main screen as well. So what's in settings? You know, it's an array of levers, many useful. I'll touch on a few. So adjustments for brightness, contrast, sharpness, saturation, and temperature. Choose the right perspective to match the projector position. So you might have the projector in the back of the screen or upside down, whatever. Aspect ratio and magnification, which is helpful if you need to make the image a little smaller or bigger based on projector and screen placement constraints. Picture quality. I'd say in terms of its core mission, playing video is largely a good story. It looks appealing in a dark room on just a blank white wall decent color and sufficient brightness. This projector, like many, can be used in the daytime, but the results are far less stunning. Plan on saving this projector for dark conditions. The image is impressively sharp, though at one point I noticed that the edge of the projection was noticeably blurry, making it difficult to read text from, say, a video streaming interface or PowerPoint presentation. It finally dawned on me that the projector was tilted up to a significant degree and when I leveled the projector body, the sharpness around the edges improved significantly, though still not quite as sharp as the center. When watching videos, however, this blurry edges issue becomes kind of a non-factor as the center of the frame is typically in focus and cinematographers typically make the edges less focused. In addition, whatever lack of focus there may be around the edges, it is typically masked by movement. Cybest claims this is a 300 inch caliber projector. That's quite big and hard for me to test seriously. I did test this on my 150 inch screen and I'd say it wasn't overkill, it held up. Keep in mind, TVs over 85 inches start to get wildly expensive, five to six figures easy. So if you're looking for a taste of that 100 inch plus experience, this projector is an affordable solution. Smile every time you watch as you didn't take on another mortgage. Oh, you're gonna be a pirate. Sound. Bottom line, you don't need an additional speaker. It can get plenty loud and dialogue is generally intelligible. It is prone to some distortion at higher volumes and there is not much bass to speak of. For casual use, throwing this in front of the kids, you're all set. Movie night with adult friends? Class it up with some external audio. All right, wrapping this up, thanks for sticking to the end. Catch you on the next one.